Hello, welcome back to the LP Dimension. I am your guide, LP. Um, over a month ago, I did... Ooh, yeah, it was probably a couple months ago now. I, um, I did a short asking what people... Uh, ooh, wow, I had to stop because there was a crow that I swear... I think it just took... A baby blue jay or yeah okay that's making me sad to think anyways uh, so I did the short about garlic scapes yeah there was two crows in a tree there was one and then another one came and the blue jays were also making that beautiful sort of chime sound, the whistle, it's, it's really pretty. Um, and then one of the crows left, and the other one started making a completely different call. And then all of a sudden I see the crow taken off with two blue jays in tow, and it definitely had something in its beak. I, I couldn't see what it was, but all three blue jays just returned, each to a different tree. Anyways, for any of you who are interested in birds, that might be fun. For the rest of you, that was an annoying side story. But, um, so in my short, I, uh, I mentioned, you know, I was talking about garlic scapes and how I had heard, um, it was on Garden Like a Viking. Um, he said that he's not so sure that, um, cutting your garlic scapes really makes a difference and um so i'm kind of curious it makes sense to me that it does that cutting the scape um it does make sense that that tells the plant to hey don't worry about producing a flower just go ahead and um work on that bulb right but i'm i'm gonna let i've got enough garlic i'm gonna let some of them go so, um, I've been noticing from a way, from a distance, I've never seen garlic, um, completely go to flower before. And these things are so tall. Look how tall these scapes are. Isn't that, wow. Um, so just a development on that, that I did decide to, let's see, in this bed, this is the younger bed. I've got one, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight in this bed. Didn't really do a certain count. Right? That's actually more than I meant to let go. And here I've got one, two, three, my tomatoes. Things are kind of falling over from a recent heavy, heavy rain, man. We, yeah, so I guess I've only got four here. So, um, I'm going to let them go ahead and bloom I guess um, and look at the borage is blooming yay these plants get big uh, what else so I had the moderator Jay Dixon in the urban gardener um, I was asking about um, rot in um, the scapes and let's see it kind of looks like what I see here on this one except it was farther down and it winds up the scape would wind up sort of collapsing in on itself and I cut those and discarded them um, I pulled I don't think I ever posted that video, did I? I pulled some of the plants and the bulbs looked fine, except for one really, really small plant. Um, and she suggested that maybe it could be the, uh, gosh, the leek moth? Something to that effect. Leek moth, I think. And based on what I looked it up, looked up when she told me that, I'm like, no, I don't think that's what it is. However... 
I've been seeing this on a lot of my plants. And that is clearly insect damage. Why do I say clearly insect damage? Because when you look at it, you can see that something's burrowing in there. And also, see those black dots? It's likely poo, bug poo. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm, I, I thought it was anthracnose. I don't know. I, so I was like, dang, no, I think it's this fungus. But then I, this started to appear. So I do think it's leak moth damage, which the poo makes me think that the larvae See, see how much there is? Actually. Oh. Look who it is. Ooh. Ooh, did you see that? He tried to get me. Oh, pew. This is an earwig. So, the poo is earwigs. I have an insane amount of earwigs around my property this season. I have found, just lift the garage door and I have tons of earwigs come out. So, It's earwig. I don't know if I'm hoping that I'm successful at squashing him or her. Yes, I am the winner. So it could still be the case. I mean, the damage I saw on the scapes really did look like anthracnose. It could still be the case. Uh, let's see this, this I've already cut. This scape, I had already broken this one off and that's what I was seeing. But, um, And wow, that was really, that was really hard. Way harder than, okay, this is the one I actually wanted to show you. See, this is a scape that I've already broken off. That is super woody. That's what I was dealing with. On young scapes. Damn, it smells good. Dang, it smells good. Um, and I, yeah, I didn't have this last year. See all these lesions? So it could be anthracnose, but it could also be the leak moth because the leak moth, I think, was, can result in this damage. I'm gonna have to do more research. Um, and then the earwig is most likely coming in after the moth and going ahead and Oh, there's a scape I didn't mean to leave. So, that's an update on the garlic that I'm having some serious issues because, wow, more, uh, tons of plants have it. And uh, when I looked up the anthracnose, also I noticed that it, it, it seemed like it was a newer, as in the last 10 years, development in um, states that garlic was getting anthracnose. So, one of the biggest bummers is one anthracnose. I don't know if alley, if this allium anthracnose or whatever can only spread to garlic, but I know that anthracnose in general refers to a type of disease that other plants do get. Um, so, can I plant? The question going forward is: Is this anthracnose or is this? the um, leak moth. Uh, like Jay Dixon suggested, 
and um, what can I do? There we go. Yeah, you can't, you didn't see it, but maybe you did. There was an earwig. Or, I mean, is this just earwigs? What do I do going forward? Can I plant garlic in this bed again? Because this is, you know, I have a sun problem, as in the sun. Uh, not problem, but I don't get like a ton of light back here. Um, I get a, I get at least six hours, but uh, so crop rotation isn't really something that I put a lot of importance on because these two beds get the most sun. Um, these two in front. That's A. This is B. I've grown tomatoes back there before with some success. Depends on the tomato, but I know they'll be more prolific in the other beds. So, growing the garlic back here um, is a thing. See, I've, and I've also grown garlic back here that didn't do as well, mainly because I planted it among the tomatoes that quickly overshaded them. Here, the garlic got going so much earlier, and the tomatoes were so small that the, gar that the tomatoes have had to grow out of the garlic. Anywho, um, these guys over here that are in a completely different bed. Yep, there's some. There's a nice little tunnel. So that's what we're looking at with the garlic. I'm letting, um, maybe I won't let as many, because there's a whole bunch of skates here that I think I just missed. Because I've got at least nine now I think nine scapes in this bed that I'm letting go and I don't think I want to do that but uh, go ahead and weigh in in the comments what you what you think like I said I it makes sense to me that this would affect the garlic bulb um, like I said these are probably these are not edible unless maybe up here but even then they still feel way more sturdy than the scapes um you saw when i broke these pieces off of scapes that were already cut i mean look at that i had to use some real force to do that so uh let me know what you think i mean it's gonna be a cool flower though like what what's that gonna do to the bulb huh what's that gonna do to the bulb and the other thing that i wanted to take a look at because i just noticed is look at that oh my first tomato hello baby that is a green zebra so a little bit longer of a video than I intended but let me know what you think there's an update on my garlic. Um, oh wow, sorry. There's an update on my garlic. And how far am I from pulling? I see we've got one, two, about three sets, three leaves, not sets, three leaves. Um, have died and I want to, this, this one here. I want to at least wait until that one's dead before I pull them. Um, I have it. I didn't actually. The, I pulled some early and they looked good, and I was gonna eat them right away, and I didn't. But uh, we'll have. I've been curing those. So yeah, I, I I probably will pull. I probably actually will pull a few others early, in large part for the sake of my tomatoes mainly over here this yeah I've got a lot of staking to do but now we're talking about something else entirely there's two red squirrels that are chasing each other those are nasty creatures just cuz they're oh gosh anyways all right thank you so much weigh in on the comments of what you think or what you know leaving the bulbs I mean well and that's the thing do I do I let them flower? Do I pull them before they flower? Because 
obviously, it's, well, I don't know. Is it obvious that it'll take a long time for them to flower? Maybe not. Well, what I'll probably do is when I harvest a bunch of these, yeah, see that little skinny guy? Right there. This, that one. I'll probably go ahead and pull that one, but not to the, not right now. Um, when I pull a bunch of the garlic, harvest it, I will, uh, I'll pull at least one that is, that escapes that I've allowed to develop more and see, see what it's starting to do. Um, but I suspect those creatures love the flowers. I know they like onion flowers. Anywho, bye for now. I appreciate your time. And uh, I would love to hear your thoughts, guesses, you know, what you know, knowledge. Ed, let me know. This is, and this is, this is like five different types of hard neck garlic. All right. Take care. Stay well. Stay safe. Bye for now.